Hello, family. Welcome back. I know that most of you are aware of what's going on in the media with the new agenda to divide and stir up these feelings of emotion that are easy to get caught up in. So many people are doing that, and most of you are aware of that, so I'm not going to go into all that and my opinions on what happened here and how angry I am at all the stuff that's going on. That's easy to get lost in, and they want you to get lost in that and caught up in the, I'm on this side and everybody else is on that side. Let's all fight against them. And that's that's what they want you to do. They want you to share these things. They want them to go viral of somebody being evil because it makes unforgiveness stir up inside of us and it stops us from sharing that light and that love that we're supposed to that is conquering so many different divides right now and, and it's scaring them. But I'm going to look back at some of the early days of racism before I get into what the word clarifies about it because there was discrimination going on in biblical times. You can read about it in the Bible and it's clarified and I'm going to go into that and it's something very powerful that we need to understand because there's false teachings in these new religions popping up where they are saying that God is racist, he only likes certain races and we're going to clarify all of that. That's something that's really upsetting me and breaking my heart when I see people like my wife learning from certain groups and then she finds out that they don't even want her to fellowship with them. So let's look at some of the things that really got racism and sort of discrimination quite large in the U.S. and around the world. And it goes back to Darwinian evolution where he was saying that we all have a common ancestor talked a lot about that in past videos, but a lot of the people who were buying into that were pushing a different narrative, a narrative that makes it look like there's a certain race that is more closely related to monkeys, and one of the people pushing that was a man named Ernst Heichel. I've shown you guys his fraudulent embryo drawings before. I had yet to see these until recently when my brother shared a video with me that blew my mind. I did not know some of the things happened as recently as they have with these sort of teachings and the influences they had that led to some very sinister things. And I'm not race baiting with this. I'm just showing you how false teachings lead to racist discriminatory thoughts. These are all of the evil one. And this man, Ernst Heichel, and he was an evolutionist trying to push out some of the same stuff Darwin was and not just with black people he was doing this with Jewish people right here you can see and he made it look like this is in order from the most evolved here number one your white male and then it's sort of your Asian looking and I'm not sure of what this is Hispanic or Middle Eastern or whatever and then you start having more of your african-american they even have more of like a gorilla looking person in front of that <laughs> and then it goes to that as you can see and at the very lowest lowest your jewish types of people here with the, with the uh, nose there you've seen the monkeys that kind of look like that and that was his illustrations fraudulent just like his embryo drawings not based on anything in particular other than his racist ideas and agenda you see here, he's got some of his drawings of other animals, too, that were transitioning. He even found Loch Ness. Probably, I think this was drawn before Loch Ness was found. So, he created Loch Ness. He found him and knew of him. He was right. <laughs> his drawings weren't all a lie. There's Loch Ness right there. But uh, his little people with their afros, surprisingly, kind of like the Java Man hoax right here with his hair like a black man, you can see. And these thoughts and ideas led people to get away with things like you see here, this young man in a zoo. They said they found a link. His teeth had been filed down to be looking like sharp, you know, cannibalistic type of teeth. And so they took this young man, put him in a zoo with a monkey and said, yeah, you know, here's one of those transitional forms that they're talking about and the missing links sort of people. and they did this sinister thing and this wasn't the only incident of its kind this happened in other places too but this is I believe the Bronx Zoo 
and that zoo is probably still there. I haven't done research into that, but nobody's riding over there. But this is where this took place. This young man in a zoo with an animal treated just like the animals. And lots of people came to this. It was a major attraction. They made a lot of money off of this. And that idea stayed pretty strong. And this was, I think, in the 1900s, early 1900s. I could be wrong. Don't, don't quote me on that. I haven't uh, done a whole lot of digging into that. I just saw that and felt that it was very revealing into what their agenda with that evolutionary nonsense was. Part of it, that's a one major part of it. The biggest part is to deny the Creator and take away that complexity of life that we still to this day cannot replicate or explain. It's that complex. But uh, where we fall on this chart right here of colors is what a lot of people think or seem to think is going to do with salvation and how we are chosen and where you lie is where the chosen race is. And that is not biblical whatsoever. And we're going to prove that. We're going to look first at a verse that shows you the discrimination that had been going on in the book of Acts when it says, You are well aware that for a man who is a Jew to have a close association with someone who belongs to another people or to come and visit him is something that just isn't done. That was something that they all agreed and knew wasn't done. Sort of like the segregations that we've had in recent times they did not mix and mingle. They stayed separate. And it says, But God has shown me not to call any person common or unclean. And this was in that vision where a lot of people, some say it, it has to do with unclean animals and now we can eat them. And what it led into was the interpretation of that dream or vision was that no person is to be considered unclean. And the word goes on to confirm when it says, I now understand that God does not play favorites, but that whoever fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him no matter what people he belongs to. I don't think it could get more clear than that. No matter what people he belongs to. Right there in the word. Okay. You can argue that's not valid. Let's look further and see if there's anything else that verifies that. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And it goes on to say the same thing here. So I've, I've put them both there in Colossians. You can see that. Now let's take a look at what Jesus says when talking to people about who his family is because his what they considered his biological brother and mother were trying to get his attention he says this to the crowd he says who is my mother and who are my brethren and he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples and said behold my mother and my brethren for whosoever shall do the will of my father which is in heaven the same is my brother and sister and mother he said, whosoever, never once did he mention a race, whosoever shall do the will of my Father. It's that simple. Once more, the kingdom of heaven is like a net thrown into the lake that caught all kinds of fish. All kinds of fish. When it was full, the fishermen brought the net up onto the shore, sat down and collected the good fish in baskets but threw the bad fish away. So it will be at the close of the age. The angels will go forth and separate the evil people from among the righteous. Again, it's not mentioning race here. Evil from among the righteous. And here's something beautiful in Matthew, a little going back a little earlier. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. For ye not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. Whosoever, therefore, shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. It didn't say what type of hair you have. No matter where your hair falls on this chart and what it looks like, the very hairs of your head 
are precious, so much so that they are numbered. It's about a father's love who's sending us his son to tell us these things. It's not about race. It's another tool of the enemy to divide, to make it about that. We need to have joy, share light. People are scared. They need to see light in you when they see you, not fear, not, oh, did you hear what's going on in the news? They need to see light. They need to be lifted up and know that you are a child of the Most High, and that is the most power and love you can have and share with anyone. And so share it as much and as often as you can. This world needs that right now. So uh, that's all I have. I just wanted to set that straight so that people will stop being misled by these false teachers. The Word doesn't tell us what they are saying it does. We were warned of these false teachers. They are here, some of them growing greatly in popularity. Expose them. Have no part in what they do. Just expose them. That's all we can do for now. But uh, I'll see you guys soon. Take care and stay ready.